Masas in hematological cancer Ok, uh, tanpa mengangkat masa Saya menjemput Dr. Bahagian Khalid Untuk meneruskan sesi ceramah pada pagi ini Jadi bukan senang nak masuk dalam tu But I cuma senang nak pergi sekali sahaja Because memang travelling apa semua And then lepas tu macam-macam nak kena transit lah apa semua Memang tak semua nak pergi seseorang lah And three days jet lags But then the information is full I've never been to the European hematology punya Because itu another hassle Back to design and shopping You know, kena ada mana lectures But in fact, dekat Malaysia ni The three centers that I had my training 18 months in Ampang, six months at UKM, and one month dekat, uh, in UM is already good enough. It's already good enough. And you know the people, hematologists, you know, what to do for, for hematology patients in Malaysia. So I, I, I didn't ask for sabbatical, I didn't ask going overseas. For me, Malaysia is not to handle all the facilities. Cuma mana nak pergi, and juga the financial toxicity that comes with it. Yeah? Not only the chemotherapy toxicity. So now we are last week we have uh, have some acquired knowledge about management of blood cancers, that are type of blood cancers, and then we are just going to understand some certain genetics, secara rambang, yeah, because we have so many blood cancers type. Yeah, kalau non Hodgkin's lymphoma ada dalam tu je, ada lebih kurang 100, nak tambah lagi 180 punya types of uh, lymphoma non Hodgkin saja ya, Hodgkin semakin tetap dalam tempat ni So I'm just going to share rambang rawak saja ambil and then understand the genetics out of it ya So again, we go back to this blood cell formation As I mentioned, paling penting, myeloproliferative mechanism So uh, last week, we have understood the fact that blood stem cell is the, the maturity is very myeloproliferative mechanism and lymphoproliferative mechanism. If you don't know whether it's mechanism or not, some of us don't know some any ideas, we call myeloproliferative disorders or disease. Ataupun lymphoproliferative disorders or disease. At some point, we langsung have no idea, myeloid ke lymphoid, we call it myelolymphoproliferative disorder. So, tapi bila ada genetic background atau ada banyak dari clinical scenarios, presentations of that patient up to the bone marrow and cytogenetic molecular uh, then if um, it, well, after knowing that the bone marrow bone marrow is a place where the, uh, the factory for the blood cells comes about now the idea of what we discussed last week about uh, replacing the bone marrow stem cells with someone else's but Please remember that it's also autologous stem cell transplant with the patient's own. So in that sense, the autologous transplantation, meaning that taking your blood cells, the blood stem cells, replacing back to your own, there is a basis because if I, I have, uh, if you remember what I mentioned last time, that the stem cells yang baru punya, yang kat dalam lubang-lubang, kat dalam trephine tu, yang baru nak tumbuh betul, yang kita akan collect, by giving the GCSF as well as some form of chemotherapy and connect this 
stem cells and these stem cells are tagged with CD34. Tagged with CD34, so we take um, some of the CD34, tapi tak semua CD34 tag uh, cells are stem cells. Tak semestinya. Okay? Jadi, when we collect the CD34, there's a machine for it and then kita infuse back to the patients once bila kita condition balik, kita kosongkan lagi teruk lagi marrow dia. So, uh, uh, apa appointment untuk collect dia punya stem cell is different and appointment untuk masuk balik stem cell dia pun is different. Jadi, tak semestinya, on the, it's not usually the same setting because we want to make sure that after we've given um, when we collect the stem cells, we also tengok balik, flow balik as well as kita smear, tengok cancer cells ada lagi ke tak? Kalau cancer cells ada lagi ke tak, maksudnya masa tengah nak collect stem cells dia, the patient side to refractory ataupun relapse. Jadi there's no point nak buat uh, autologous stem cells. Yeah? But there are some certain instances whereby kita buat juga. Sebab kalau dah tak ada donor langsung lah. Yeah? Kita buat juga hoping that you know something good out and then we discuss dengan patient lah. Tak adalah kita buat sendiri sendiri. Kita cakap dengan patient, it's very difficult to get um, other people's stem cells. Only yours is viable and kalau nak tengok pun macam ni. Kita kena discuss. So every time we sell off our treatment and therapy to the patient. Kadang-kadang orang akan kata, oh Dr. Bahari punya management lain, Dr. Trump punya management lain, UMMC management lain, SDMC management lain. Memang lain, sebab patient lain-lain. Jadi dulu-dululah, ramai orang adalah seorang very senior. Oh, marah, 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 marah kita orang. Tapi conducivity of that patient itself macam mana. So that's why sekarang ni personalised medicine. In fact, ada personalised medicine conference and that's why some patients kita buat bone marrow. Some patients kita buat peripheral blood stem cell. So this man, dia yang introducekan, itu Arnold Thomas ni, dia yang pioneer the bone marrow transplantation. Bone marrow transplantation meaning that once you have the donor, you should dulu pun orang buat autologous pun macam tu lah. Ini yang zaman-zaman dulu. Yeah? Mesin, uh, pump mesin, apa, mesin uh, minyak pump pun tak ada credit card lagi lah. Ya. Jadi, um, what happened is that once kalau ada HLA match di class 1 dan class 2 memang very detailed matching um, DNA dia tu kalau memang ada match then kita akan put the patient patient masuk bila dia habis kemoterapi yang biasa-biasa tu already in remission and think that it's best to do a transplantation the reason why kita buat transplantation is because kita nakkan remission dia yang CR tu will be maintained longer Jadi kita namakan as the consolidating phase of the chemo. So bila dah bagi chemotherapy ni, now the advances is that sometimes we offer patients stem cell transplantation daripada awal kita cerita. Daripada awal kita cerita pasal chemotherapy, stem cell transplant option is incorporated into that. Dulu-dulu kita tak cerita stem cell. Ibu jenis cakap sangat baik tu, tapi ni dia cuma macam takut ni. But now this tak, since 2008, Bila cakap macam pasal hematologic cancer, kita cerita terus pasal replacing the bone marrow. Of course, semua orang nak kejap perut lah. Ha? Takutlah benda tu yang kaya, oh dah syak lah tu. Dah memang tak ada harapan lagi dah. Tapi yang sebenarnya, bone marrow stem cell ni, kita nak buat supaya whatever remission yang patient dapat to be prolonged longer, years even. Yeah? Yeah. So, there are some conditions where the bone marrow transplant patient, we will offer that for the hands-on. Ada yang kita akan um, offer a bit later dan ada yang kita akan offer ataupun kita akan treat awal tapi kita buat selepas habis by the salvage therapy or, or the first time remission kita akan treat because the dynamic of family members pun kena tengok juga lah so that's why for me because menak orang Malaysia ni dia terlalu lambat you know financial toxicity pun dia juga lah jadi I always of buat HLA typing dia tahu one screen adik adik or macam nak cari emas saja so and and Malaysians dif, uh, it's difficult to get HLA type match from Malaysians because we're heterogeneous and hal yang senang is actually the Americans and the Chinese because dia orang memang set tu je lah ya? kita banyak campur jadi um, for the bone marrow transplantation at some point in the US and UK, they find that bila nak buat bone marrow ni menyusahkan 
Because the donor, kalau ada, dia kena put dia under anesthesia. Doktor balik, I pernah buat dekat HKL dulu. Doktor balik, anesthesia nak kena bagi views apa semua. Lepas tu, my specialist, Dr. Semari, sekarang the head dekat, uh, head of, uh, apa, hematology dekat Kota uh, Baru. Dia cocok satu, punggung sebelah sini, I cocok satu lagi sebelah sini. And we took out almost like 1.5 to 2 liters of milk and making sure the modern entry is stable. Nak kena replace, nak make sure the sedation tak too much, you know. And then in between, tengah-tengah, nak make sure that the CD34 count tu, yang we supposedly uh, 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 the apa, stem cell, tapi tak semuanya stem cell. We want to make sure most of the time kita ambil 2 times 10 the power of 9. Dia ada nombor dia. So Malaysians 2 times 2 times 10 the power of 9 pun payah nak dapat. Americans, Caucasian semua, they can go up to 10, 20. Tapi kita ni dapat 2 pun payah. Itu pun daripada the bone marrow yang betul-betul kita ambil. Jadi, um, no matter what, kita ambil itu lah. And then lepas tu, patient uh, donor will have be having dua packs lah dekat punggung dia. So, nampak macam payah nak dapat booking OT time, booking pergi tu nak buat pre-op assessment, kadang-kadang patient tu ada heart ke apa tu, nak pergi jumpa doktor jantung dulu, nak buat kaju apa semua. So, we try to get the most healthiest donor as possible. Now then, after that, the advance is that they buat peripheral blood stem cell. So these are the cells yang dia akan replace ya. Yeah? So everything lah, hormones yang kat dalam blood cells tu. And of course, um, as I mentioned that the blood has many functions. So even the apa, immune cells, T cells, B cells, NK cells will be replaced ya. Yeah? Now this peripheral blood stem cell collection is much easier. The donor yang match tu, tidak perlu nak go through any chemotherapy of course. Tidak perlu nak go through in a perlitus sedation. <coughs> but what do they, do they need is the GCSF. The GCSF ni yang granulocyte stimulating colony factor. Kita cucuk dalam dikong tiga hari. And then lepas tu kita check CD34 dia. Perifer blood vessel and see whether it's enough or not. To that, nak reach to that mark. And lepas tu kita masukkan. Macam ni nampak senang aja kan. Dia masuk macam orang apa donik blood aja. Tapi, as usual, blood vessels to people, kita tak ada masa, especially for very busy centers like Alpha, kita masukkan fumarol catheter. Sebiji yang macam dialysis. Jadi kita nak attach to the machine, tapi dia a pharisis machine, not the dialysis. It's like macam plasma pharisis machine. Whereby kat sini, dia akan tengok color yang mana yang menunjukkan CD34 tu um, enak. Uh, this, this color, dia darah tu warna merah aja kan. Jadi bila dia asingkan di centrifuge kan, Dia ada warna merah pekat, merah cair sikit, pink, lepas tu light tu pink. Jadi yang mana satu yang usually yang tengah-tengah ni lah, is open itu yang light colour tu yang indicating that at ECD34, it will be collected into this bag. Okay? Jadi sama ada nak buat masa time tu juga, jadi patient uh, donor akan masuk tiga hari, but patient akan masuk like so a week before or 10 days before depending on what type of conditioning regimen they will receive which is a chemotherapy yang conditioning to chemotherapy sebelum di transplant sebelum nak terima stem cells tu similarly untuk bone marrow juga lah masa bone marrow tu pun sama ada patient tu masuk dan masa donor tu pun masuk juga dia dah macam patient tu dah disediakan untuk terima stem cell tu kalau patient tak dapat katil penuh tak apa uh, then these stem cells will be preserved in cryo, uh, apa? Cryo punya freezer lah. Kat sini banyak cryo freezer kan. Kita ada banyak stem cell punya apa? Laboratory. Then that will be stored minus berapa berapa, and that can last until you know uh, cryo freezer to expire lah. Jadi bila kata lah. Eh, uh, Patient tu pun telah disediakan, telah pun dapat conditioning and marrow memang empty. So, this stem cell masuk kat dalam patient tu macam blood drip biasa je lah, macam transfusion biasa je. And then of course, dia ada some preconditioning before that. And there are some spoilies, ada banyak complications juga lah yang kita kena tunggu masa tengah transfusion so they can have hypertension shock, hypertensive, macam anaphylactic shock je lah. Tapi ni orang lain punya kan. Jadi, um, Tapi dia 
will be a dedicated staff nurse lah dekat situ check vital signs sampai habis. It's just around 15 minutes kerja macam tu. And then when we do, uh, we will monitor the patient sampai uh, dia punya absolute neutrophil calm dengan platelet dia naik. When we give that condition chemotherapy, of course everything will be nearing zero. Yeah. So bila nak tahu sama ada it's engrafted or not, we will see that neutrophil, absolute neutrophil calm will be more than one in upcoming trend, two consecutive uh, FBC counts. Usually, this will happen around day 7, day 8. Macam tu lah, kalau dia boleh ada orang muda. Kalau orang yang tak terlalu muda, will be much longer. If there is a subsequent infection, serious infection, especially kalau there's neutropenic sepsis, fungal infection is the most worrying thing. And sometimes, sekarang pun antifungal yang saya kata kulat-kulat kat sini ni, antifungal tu pun lagi mahal daripada sebiji kita. Nah, itu mahal ni lah ubat tu. Tapi of course, that's the best ubat lah. Best studied and also um, being researched. Jadi, the evolution, the advances is constantly being researched. Dan kadang, I pergi hemato update hari ni, dua bulan lagi dah cerita lain. So, dia kena, dia punya cerita banyak. Ini dia dah cecit, piyol, muik, apa semua, unyang, tok ni, semua cerita. Jadi, kadang-kadang confused juga. That's why dekat US, dekat UK, dia ada Department of Stem Cell Transplant. Department of Leukemia. Department of Multiple Myeloma. Dia ada different different department. So, memang ni orang nak lah. I memang semuanya under one, one group lah. One to two. Jadi, now the latest one is. Jadi, sekarang tadi ada cerita apologus di bawah sini. Donor. Now, this donor ni, yang kalau daripada adik-beradik sendiri, we hope ada 50% chance. Kita dengan adik-beradik ada 50% chance to match, betul-betul, totally match. Now, kalau yang bukan adik-beradik, sebab adik-beradik tak ada, yang ada kata kita bagi hantar dia punya DNA, pergi ke Singapore, dan check dekat Taiwan, Hong Kong, and also um, dekat US. Yang itu kita panggil matched, unrelated, donor transplant. Okay, yang adik-beradik, match sibling transplant. Yeah. Jadi kalau orang didengar orang cerita, oh this one for mat ni, for mat ni, match unrelated donor, maksudnya we have done the process of searching unrelated donor, yang probably uh, six by six match. Ha, ni cerita lain pula lagi. Dalam dia punya tu, HLV-5P ni, dia ada class 1 and class 2. So untuk nephro punya transplant, they just need class 1. Dia ada tiga je dia punya, apa, DRW, dia punya locus point. Untuk hematologi, of course lah nak kena detail lagi, mesti lebihnya lagi yang lain, class 2. Jadi dia ada another 3, so 6 by 6 match, kalau boleh. And by this matching ni, kenapa kena match? Kadang-kadang kita tak, tak ada, tak ada, apa, tak ada donor lain, kita ambil juga 5 over 6. Sebab kalau 6 by 6, compared to 5 over 6, kalau sibling punya match, the risk of graft versus host disease is higher in, the 5 over 6. Risk of graft versus host disease is less in 6 over 6. Yang betul-betul match. Yeah. So the graft is happy. The, re, the, the, the chance of cure and longer remission is better in 5 over 6. Possibly standard remission uh, overall, uh, uh, remission rate until 6 over 6. So that the graft versus host disease as, as my, I mentioned. Jadi, um, Bila dah tahu macam tu, then orang perasan that bila kita buat the myeloability punya ni, memang banyak, walaupun it's 5 over 6 or 6 over 6, masih lagi banyak transplant related mortality. Whether it's related to the graft versus host disease or fungal infection or some other sequelae after that. Related to the transplant. One of the ones yang paling-paling susah kita payah nak, nak, nak monitor ataupun payah nak buat is um, the sequelae of uh, renal occlusive disease. Remember, kita replace the T-cells, cytotoxic T-cells, semua tu kan? So, dia menyebabkan the blood vessels, bila dah ada conditioning yang kuat tu, the blood vessels tu tersumbat dengan macam-macam jenis T-cells, macam-macam jenis um, apa, cytokines. Jadi boleh menyebabkan, especially dalam in the liver, dalam hati ini, the blood vessels, or this bukan blood vessels, the sinusoids. Yeah? Dia ada hepatocytes, apa semua tu susun. And then, air, darah tu mengalir dalam 
which is macam dah sinusoid ni, that area can be blocked. Ada thrombus kat dalam tu, ada blood clot. Jadi, this vein of positis ni, it's like diagnosis of exposure. Ubat untuk prophylaxis mengelak benda ni berlaku pun quite expensive juga lah tapi buat makan. So, it, we, we do give them prophylaxis lah, almost up to 60 days. So, the sequelis of transplant ni banyak. Jadi, we have to sit down, faham macam mana betul-betul nak transplant patients, what is the sequelis after that, and we talk about the transplant related mortality. Kita mesti cakap, the risk of death ada. Ya, bukannya tak ada langsung. Jadi, dia orang pun akan decide sama ada dia orang nak buat transplant atau tidak. Kalau tak nak buat transplant, dan kita tengok cara-cara lain. Ya? Um, tapi, in the end, kadang-kadang, uh, buat juga lah. And some certain disease, buat pun, tak cure pun. Especially the T-cell uh, acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. Yang itu masih lagi sampai sekarang, people are still looking at what is the best option, transplant or not transplant. So it's just not a man of cure. It's also a, a, a man of prolonging the remission. You can be cured with the chemotherapy sahaja, tapi you nak prolongkan the remission lagi. So this hyperidentical is basically any relative member yang bukan uh, adik beradik dan bukan yang langsung bukan relative. So any relative member and most of the time parents lah, especially kalau parents tu muda kan, diorang yang akan jadi the donor. So they will be undergoing the peripheral blood stem cell. Most of the time sekarang ni semua buat peripheral blood stem cell. But there are some cases yang kita rasa lebih sesuai untuk buat bone marrow. Jadi kita select our cases. Tak semuanya kita kata hmm, bone marrow terus tak payah buat lah. You know, kita buat juga in certain certain disease. Yeah? So the milestones are quite long. So ni yang nak kata advances. Eh? Masih lagi at this very point in time pun ada banyak lagi uh, advances. So how are we, and this is present in Malaysia, bukannya tak ada, cuma kita tak expose banyak. Most of the conferences on hematology, hematology saja yang pergi. Kita tak panggil houseman, kita tak panggil MO, sebab it's very, very exclusive juga lah. I hope that we can do in August something yang lebih uh, general so that everybody understand that we are too much advanced in hematological cancers. Yeah? Now, so in 50s, chemotherapy including children, in 60s, they combine chemotherapy in childhood, first combination chemotherapy. So, dulu kan, cuma satu jenis saja chemo. Katalah, azacitidine. That was the oldest one, azacitidine. Lepas tu, in 1960s, dia menggunakan combination of chemotherapy. Idarubisin dengan um, ara, apa, cytosine arabinoside. Arasi, kita selalu panggil lah. So, they combine kan. In 70s, dia orang pula take, baru tahu yang pasal this bone marrow also can work lah. In 80s, they have identified about our laboratory, especially in Malaysia, laboratory UVM. That's probably the reason why I'm in hematology. Um, kita punya molecular diagnosis, kita punya molecular setup is so impressive. Yeah? Cuma tak dapat ISO, it's about orang tahu kita impressive. Jadi, kita punya expert tu dah ada. So, we can identify the tumor of on oncogenes. Oncogenes ni maksudnya, dalam genes tu, ada satu gene yang akan promote kanser tu berlaku. Suppressor gene, ada satu gene, mungkin duduk sebelah dia atau duduk dalam kromosom lain yang suppress that gene. Jadi apa gene yang mana dan yang mana satu yang suppress, yang mana satu yang express. So in 1980s, they have developed this apa, teknik nak find out lah. So we have we have um, apa identified. Jadi ini juga will be impacted on the prognosis of the patient. Whether that remission can be prolonged with or without bone marrow transplant or not. Yeah? In 1990s, especially in lymphoma, memang hebat. This is really a pioneer. Satu jenis ubat, whereby masa kan ni um, development of flow cytometry under Dr. Maha, yeah, the flow cytometry, they boleh identify CD20 as the lymphocyte um, lymphocyte yang lebih kurang the malignant ones lah. Our lymphocyte yang normal pun ada CD20. Tapi ini betul-betul target CD20 kalau banyak-banyak. Jadi we can actually bagi IV rituximab ni, US panggil rituxan. Bila masuk IV, dia akan cari CD20 lymphocyte ni pasal dia bunuh. The patch, dia buat some apa 
dia absorb something inside tu macam ada um, lawak ni lah yang saya cakap sebab kalau uh, hematologi term it's expression, express, masuk, energy dan semua it's ni lah so dia akan bunuh that CD20 cells so this bila kita combine dengan combination chemotherapy for lymphoma it seems to give another 10% extra benefit to the patients maksudnya daripada tak bagi compare dengan yang bagi chemotherapy ni yang sama tapi dia campurkan dengan reduximab they find that there's extra 10% patients that can last longer in fact in remission in 5 years overall survival disease free survival kita panggil kalau 5 years tu kita nak cakap overall survival tak achieve lah siapa nak hidup hmm, sampai ini cuma 5 tahun je kan kalau kita nak hidup 20 tahun atau sampai apa oh, lama lah kan jadi kita dia change daripada overall survival kepada disease free survival jadi daripada short term short term ni banyak CR, CRP OS, disease free survival free from progression uh, rate, sama juga lah jadi they are very detailed and in fact the methodology tu banyak the studies banyak and then it proves that rituximab does help in increasing the overall survival since then yang sebenarnya dalam blue book ataupun registered is untuk lymphoma rituximab but since then when they look at other uh, diseases that can be due to B lymphocytes ni yang ada CD20 ni diorang guna juga off label use but Americans dah say jadi kita boleh lah tapi kalau kita buat, Americans semangat lah uh, macam tu lah ok now then um, in 2000 yang saya tunjuk data yang ini dia target yang genes ni the oncogene so this is the first one yang makan ubat pill saja terus duduk dekat oncogene ni oncogene dia tak payah nak transplant dah and then dia punya so far the study siapa yang makan Glimac ni especially untuk chronic myeloid leukemia the study now has gone into the 13th year so far ada around half set to up to 70% yang still is in complete response maksudnya response dia sangat bagus sampai boleh dikatakan tak ada cancer tapi kalau kita check dalam lagi log 5 ada lagi lah sikit dia punya oncogenes ni tapi it's not expressing and they live like orang biasa it's not even chemo ni yang I kata kuputih kuputih ni tu dia makan and then dia punya kulit lepas rejet putih in fact ada husband patient pising kat I kenapa wife dia putih sekarang ni pising je sebab orang duduk kacau dia dekat pasal malam husband komplain kat I tu, that was a support group you know cancer support group dia sinong cerita-cerita dia tu husband mahu macam je yang wife dia gelak-gelak dia dia sinong biasa je dia tu kata doktor saya tak puas hati wife saya putih isteri saya putih nak tu sebab susah nak jaga jadi then 2010 Genomic medicine, precision medicine, adoptive immunotherapy Macam-macam dia buat dekat chemo ni Dan kadang macam-macam dia buat untuk yang Contrast-contrast uh, Radio, immuno, contrasted IUD dan apa semua Untuk pecah-pecahkan cells ni Sampai this one I seriously It's like nuclear medicine juga lah But seriously it's so complicated for me Because dia boleh pecahkan cell tempat lain ni I prefer more targeted therapy Then in 2020 Then they decided yang ini mungkin boleh, yang itu tak boleh kot ha. jadi these are the milestones once unimaginable new treatments are saving lives today so we are quite targeted, we are quite personalized and this is available in Malaysia kalau you boleh cover the financial toxicity now what's very generic we have to answer to Ministry of Health Pylori untuk gastric tu ha, Dia tak perut saja, dia tak tempat lain Jadi kita panggil dia mox lymphoma Gastro, gastro uh, Entro mox lymphoma Yang ini dia suka hidung ni So, orang kata resdung lah Macam-macam Jadi ini bukan dia kena banyak kali baiksi ya. Ini disebabkan lymphoma tu Dia betul-betul makan hidung dia tu semua. Sangat Sangat benda tu Kesian juga lah sangat dia And depression sama Sebab quite handsome looking then to not to be like this bagi chemo, as I mentioned, NKT cell lymphoma it's very difficult to treat of course we offer stem cell transplant 
eliminasi dia orang ada apa uh, plastic surgeon you know which reconstructive surgery dan offer but the problem is it was never cure locally kita bagi radiotherapy pun dia sloughing lah kan jadi so dia dah slough nak catch to the to the cancer cells lagi the apa healing is not that good so ultimately he succumb to the disease Yang ini tak nampak sangat This one is like uh, This is orang ingat dia macam ada renal disease Ataupun macam bersedung eh? But this is actually cutaneous T cell lymphoma Kita panggil in case of mucons fungoides Dia macam ada fungus dekat kulit Tapi sebenarnya is actually a uh, cutaneous T cell lymphoma So ada lymphoma yang suka dekat kulit uh, Jadi The virologically dia tu Metrogenous, virologically And this is quite difficult to treat I have actually put in uh, untuk HPUPM this machine extra corporeal photophoresis. Cuma ada sekarang ni yang saya dapat tahu dekat Ampang, Singapore, Hong Kong aja yang ada this machine. Hopefully we'll get it for this mycosis from It's quite rare, but apparently dia uh, it helps in some other autoimmune diseases as well. Dia macam puva dermatology yang untuk psoriasis ya masuk dalam tu tapi yang ini dia masuk daripada dalam darah. Jadi darah tu kita keluarkan, patient dah makan the sorallen macam buah tapi dia tablet. Jadi darah in the system already ada sorallen ni and the blood sama juga lah daripada uh, apa femoral catheter kita masukkan dalam this uh, uh, machine dia akan pusing-pusing bawah ni ada UV light. Jadi dia akan buah ni dia akan attach to the T cells. And then lepas tu bila masuk dalam UV light ni dia akan bunuh the T cells Yang, yang apa, cancerous ni yeah? So hopefully the control is better We cannot put them in remission yeah? Multiple myeloma Oh this is another another advances Dulu kita cerita pasal multiple myeloma siapa yang clinician lah ya yeah? Faham Kalau multiple myeloma ni you kena ada 2 out of 3 criteria Dulu which is like 1980s. Two out of three criteria, renal failure, Ben Jones protein, dengan bone pain. Tapi sekarang, the advances is that dia ada ketam. Crack. Hypercalcemia, renal impairment, anemia, and bone pain. So, dia dah refine kan lagi daripada two out of three. Yeah. Ini Hospital Universal Tario di Salamanca, Spain where they look at up to the molecular level of multiple myeloma. So I believe that Sander, this is one of the experts. There's another one, Jose Marios. So we went there, and then kita belajar lah, kita orang terkejut lah. Dekat sana, molecular, kita bawa banyak molecules, a little burden apa semua. We were quite shocked. And tempat tu, dia memang kampung. Padang aja. Kita nak dapatkan benda-benda yang canggih ni dekat bandar. Tapi dia orang boleh yang canggih-canggih di kampung So, it was quite a nice trip And this is a natural history of uh, multiple myeloma Like 20, 30 years ago It's not a video to me Because of the advances in up to molecular And also treatment Sebab bila dah treatment Kita boleh treatment sampai dia boleh relax 2-3 kali And it's controlled Jadi kalau dah habis Relax dengan kadang-kadang up to refractory Kita cuba juga lagi until dia dapat At least plateau remission And this is not from the cell saja Kita ada tengok dia punya para proteins That Benz Jones tu Kita boleh tengok Is it IgG, IgA, MDE ke And we try to put that plateau remission And then autologous transplant Kalau nampak macam plasma blastic Sebab plasma cells ni Multiple myeloma ni It's actually plasma cells Plasma cells ni is the most mature form of B lymphocytes Dia yang keluarkan IgG, IgM apa semua ni Jadi kalau dia keluarkan IgG saja, maksudnya it's multiple myeloma Okay, kalau dia keluar IgA aja, that's multiple myeloma Jadi we need to put that into a plateau remission And then replace either autologous ataupun allogenic Tak tahu lah, you faham pun dia tak ajar kat ni? Boleh ya? Jadi it's not so easy rasa macam hematology is simple darah you just bagi ubat papaya jus and that's it you know ni tak tahu ubat apa yang nak buat okay. now sekarang ni ubat yang ini pula 
Yang ni ubat ni jakawi Dia attack pada genetic oncogene tu Dia attack pada JAK2 B617F Yang ini myeloproliferative neoplasm Ingat balik mana And then the JAK2 tu the oncogenes Semua proliferate Yang ini in essential thrombosis matrices Baru being studied untuk ET Tapi dia punya treatment is actually untuk primary my, primary and secondary myelofibrosis Yang apa uh, Banyak uh, Banyak parut-parut kat dalam sum-sum tulang tu So yang ini pula BCR able JAK2 B617F dia negatif Yang ini yang kata CNL Chronic myeloid leukemia Yang bagi makan diri back The thing is The oncogene tu berlaku bila ada translocation Ini daripada cytogenetic Translocation daripada 9 to 22 So you nampak sini 9 Pendek kan? Sini 9 Eh sorry 22 Panjang Jadi bila dekat area ni Dia keluarkan The oncogene tu Dia ekspreskan tyrosine kinase Jadi Glivac tu Dia duduk dekat sini And Dia duduk dekat sini Dia block that tyrosine kinase From being expressed Dan menyebabkan differentiation tu berlaku so this is the first cancer pill being uh, invented in the world okay? And this has achieved cure Mengelak almost half of them daripada dia dapat transplant Dan juga chemotherapy Terus bagi ubat ni, terus cantik Tak ada chemo-chemo The reason why, as I mentioned, the reason why kita nak control counts Dan kita nak control daripada transform into something Either transform to being for marble Yang ini CML ni dia akan transform kepada myelofibrosis dan acute leukemia Jadi kalau kita dapat control dengan blocking this gene They won't transform lah And the cells are normal Now this is another one yang kita tak tahu cancer atau tidak Tak dapat genetik dia Tak dapat identify cell dia Tapi sum-sum tulang kosong Kalau ada pun darah Dia tak tahan macam kita kalau ada waisan dia tak tahan lama macam kita Jadi kita panggil dia sindrom Sebab tak ada genetik Genetik dia macam campur-campur Kita tak boleh identify satu Tak ada molekula pun campur-campur Kita nak identify satu Kalau genetik dia tiba-tiba ada fitri Kita dah panggil dia leukemia Transform to leukemia Jadi MPS ni memang nak pergi insurance Kalau siapa nak ambil insurance Especially UN Dia akan tanya is this cancer? Dan dia bagi sugat kat kita orang but it has potential to to uh, progress into cancer. Ah uh, baru sama ada insurance so akan cover atau tak cover lah. Jadi you can see the progression and milestone characterization of treatment it's very vast. And characterization ni pun bergantung kepada treatment related classification. Sama ada dia, dia boleh terima tak boleh terima chemo tu. And in fact, kelakarnya, azacitidine ni was a chemotherapy untuk acute myeloid leukemia Masa time-time Germany bergaduh First Second World War Jadi itu juga dia bawa balik kat sini In 2004 And this seems to control the counts Less transfusion But not to cure But usually, kalau untuk orang muda Less than 45, we offer allogenic transplant We don't offer at auto Sebab dia punya stem cells pun dah mungkin tak elok tu begin with Jadi kita offer allogen Kalau muda ya And now this is the latest uh, WHO based prognostic scoring system Untuk predict survival in MDS Kalau tengok tadi banyak Yang 2005 uh, Sekarang ni dah 2016 tak berubah lagi dah So most of us are quite happy Sebab dia correlate dengan graph tadi The disease, the overall survival ya So that is hematological cancers We have to remember Sequelase of hematological cancers ni pun Maksudnya apa komplikasi berlaku Kerana cancer tu pun akan menjamin You punya overall survival Sama ada sebelum Semasa chemo Sebelum transplant Ataupun selepas transplant ya? Yang hematological cancer per se Hyperviscosity syndrome Dia boleh dapat heart attack Jadi, how can you give a chemotherapy kalau ada heart attack? Yeah. And tumor lysis syndrome, dia ada renal failure You have to discuss nak chemo atau tidak But at the same time, that chemo also ada side effects untuk untuk buah pinggang This tumor lysis already dah macam apa, affect half of the function 
jadi would the patient agreeable to be on chemo or not in the expense of your kidney function maksudnya so, they, they have the tendency to be on dialysis forever would they be agreeable thoracic outlet syndrome especially lymphoma you want to reduce you want to radiate or you want to buang jadi in a hematology center dia akan bagi chemo dulu Okay, tapi of course risk of hemolysis lah sebab bulky disease so that is also conferring to the prognosis overall outcome dia bagus atau tidak tapi kalau dia masuk dekat sedang hospital kardio thoracic dia akan buka dulu dia tak bagi chemo jadi the post op complications affects prognosis kalau dia dekat uh, apa uh, kalau dia Dekat-dekat sini lah, dekat-dekat tepi, from jalil sini Kita akan bagi radiotherapy dulu Jadi, which one is which? Lambat dengan cepat Also affects eh, the prognosis Pericardial mass or massive refractory pleural effusion This is another one As I mentioned, some cells this could a dome je Itu pun dah prognosisnya Jadi kalau dia ada dekat jantung, orang jantung, orang paru-paru pun Confirms the prognosis Venous thromboembolism, yang ini yang kata darah beku senang ya, post transplant pun ada dekat darah beku ini yang sebelum transplant BTE ini pun sebenarnya under hypoviscosity syndrome, uh, syndrome. neutropenic sepsis, anemia, DIBC infection and then you dah faham dah what I'm trying to say it affects the prognosis now bila dah you don't have you know you don't have other options palliative care at least 50% overall survival in 6 months So this is very important in some aspect of patients' life, especially if they are young and having cancers which is not curable. Jadi, of course, kalau you tanya nak try papaya juice, carry on. If it, you know, happily, psychologically helps in that way. Oops, oh, ni kulit lambat sendiri pula. Apa ni, this is um, the antifungal infection. I presented this very advanced antifungal therapy dekat China and it's as far as I remember it's very expensive um, in fact under Ministry of Health kita tak dapat lagi uh, but it's good but then somehow daripada nak bagi yang IV form they have found an oral form sebab fungus ni daripada apa yang kita makan jadi bila kita advise patient yang on chemotherapy kita tahu nitrosis yang akan rendah in around 10 to 14 days especially at the gut the gut ni kan perut kan polisman kat dalam perut jadi bila di rosa tu sistem pun rendah dekat gut pun rendah dia tak boleh nak 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 cover daripada bakteria fungus-fungus and we advise dalam kita punya diet intrapenic diet jangan makan benda-benda mentah jangan makan sayur ulam sebab ada fungus kat situ ya so this one um, daripada yang intravenous form sekarang ni ini tahun bila 2010 2014 dah keluar yang oral form punya untuk cover the gut It helps in prophylaxis as well as treatment. Jadi prophylax pun boleh, treat pun boleh. But those patients yang ada dapat chemotherapy, tapi mulut pecah-pecah, dan susah sikit. Kita go back to the intravenous ones. Yang ini BTE. Ah, okay. These are, I think B no hit dekat ini mas. Ini dah Cik Osli, uh, apa, Dato' Osli. Eh? And this is Salim Yusof. Kita kat sini ada Kali Yusof. Tapi oh, oh, oh. Around the world kenal Salim Yusof He's a, one of the best cardiologists in the world Buat macam-macam studies And he's interested in heart As well as masa time tu kita cerita pasal uh, Trombosis And um, Kan dulu kita bagi makan warfarin kan Pernah dengar warfarin uh, so Warfarin masalah dia nak kena Apa? Nak kena check every month INR Jadi masa time ni kita orang cerita pasal satu jenis Anticoagulation, you boleh prophylaxis sebelum terjadi dan untuk treatment um, Sejenis macam ubat untuk cairkan dalam tapi tak perlu nak check ayam Tak payah check, makan macam tu dah ini Kita panggil Libarok Seban, another one is Dabilatran So it's a newer oral anticoagulant for us Because it's just around 3-4 uh, years dekat sini, IJN pun dah guna lama But ke overseas dia tak panggil uh, novel oral antibiotic dia panggil uh, directed oral antibiotic. So 
sebab dah not new for that It's around 10 years old Is there any other card for Lee? Thank you Any questions? Penat Tak ada lah penat Kerana banyak Jadi Masa I got the topic I memang cakap Fundamentals Advances At least Overall Siapa yang dah datang I mean I try to recap balik lah Yang, yang last week punya But it's quite advanced I can I cannot say the least that kita semua nakkan yang bagi upah dia habis hilang sebolehnya. Dan benda tu memang ada and a lot of other uh, research is you know following that even breast cancers, lung cancers, tu orang guna juga yang macam PKI inhibitors ni. <coughs> Jadi it's quite advanced kind of pathology. So any questions? Tak ada ya? Okay. Alright. Any question, Yashota? Tak ada. Banyak kerja lah ya. <laughs> ini baru hematology cancer. Yang I buat sekarang ni dua-dua. Cancer, non-cancer, internal medicine. Jadi, pada ni banyak idea tak, tak sempat nak tulis apa-apa. But, it's um, when when the apa uh, jumpa patient tu, of course, the first uh, apa investigation apa Yashota yang kita buat kat patients kita. The first prime investigation kita buat kat what? I buat tanya soalan <laughs> Mesti dapat bawah ring The investigation yang kita buat dekat what? Blood test? Blood test ha? Blood test apa yang? Ha? FBC FBC ni kan? Ya FBC ha, Full blood count Jadi in the medicine kat what tu buat senang sebab ha. ada FBC ni And sedang punya FBC is very very thorough Masalah ni diorang cuma tengok white cell, HB, diorang clear tapi bila kita tengok kan, bila saya tengok, saya memang happy Sebab saya boleh tahu platelet dia but naik ke tak naik lepas ni Sebab dia ada mean platelet volume, not many hospital ada mean platelet volume tu Jadi, in fact, Dr. Sabarian nak buat study on mean platelet volume saja. It's all that in the sedap Jadi, it's quite, uh, not to say kacang lah, it's quite banyak So that, menyebabkan, hopefully, I have time nak buat research and teaching and semua But this is one way of telling that uh, it's quite advanced more advances apa yang saya cakap hari ni may not be true in the future maybe more different jadi saya cuma ambil yang sikit-sikit saja eh? right. thank you Michael. terima kasih di ucapkan kepada Dr. Bahaya semoga perkongsian ilmu yang telah disampaikan ini akan memberi manfaat kepada kita bersama dan kalau ada apa-apa pertanyaan soalan yang ingin dikemukakan boleh berjumpa dengan Dr. Bahaya secara personal uh, ataupun boleh melalui UKI juga uh, kami juga mengalur alukan sebarang cadangan penambahbaikan uh, sekiranya ada uh, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang ingin mem- mem- mempelajari